Buddy Norm from Tested here at Monster Palooza 2018. Ran into Brandon Shiflett, one half of the Shiflett brothers. Yes, sir. It's been two years since we saw you guys at San Diego Comic Con. That's right. Where we had to stop by your booth to check out some of the sculptures that you and your brother collaborated on. And it's such a pleasure to see you here with some in progress works. Yes, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of artists come to this, this show, a lot of sculptors, and they love to see this in progress stuff. So let's talk about some of these pieces. Because sure. the works in progress let us see your process. Right. And uh, you guys are hand sculptors by, by training, taught yourselves. That's right. And uh, last we checked, you guys work with, uh, with Super Sculpey. Uh, wh right. What's your medium here? And so a lot of these are Aves epoxy sculpt. And this is a two-part epoxy. You mix it together and it starts getting hard. Mm. Uh, and it gets hard over two or three hours and it changes consistency a little bit along the way. But you need to know what you're going to do with it because it's hardening as you go. So you may be working on a spot on this arm and you're working it in. And then within two hours or so, it's pretty hard. That's it, you, yes. no removal. That's right, really. that's right. If you want a removal, we can dremel some out, we can file things out. So there, it, we can do that. But our entire process, even with SuperSculpt, really is an additive process where we're really bulking it out. That's just how we've always sculpted. And you guys start with some type of armature? That's right. We use aluminum alloy wire, uh, almaloy, and we wrap that armature with floral wire, a little cloth covered wire that helps the clay adhere to that wire. And uh, that's how we build an armature. Everywhere the clay is, it needs wire to support itself. Mm -hmm. And so there's wire in every finger, every tail, wow. everything. I'm looking at this one right yeah. here, and I can mm -hmm. see a little bit of that that's wire. Right through that's the right. wings here. <laughs> but something that's so striking about your work is you guys do one-offs, but you also do kits. That's and right. you guys are fearless in terms of your <laughs> sculpting. Because when I look at this, and she's holding a dragon underneath, right. how does this get turned into a resin kit or even a bronze casting? So when we started, we understood there were all these ways we could constrict ourselves and restrict ourselves in sculpting that let's make it easy to cast, let's make it easy to mold. And we wanted creatively not to do that. You know, we realized that if you if you spend enough money, anything is moldable, if you mm -hmm. cut it into enough pieces. Sure. So what we would do for our mold maker, who we work with closely, is Steve West from Cellarcast, who's really, it's an art into itself, and he's a genius at what he does. He tells us where he wants it cut, and we cut this into many pieces. It might be 20 pieces even. It might even be 30 if we needed to go that far. So the pieces are uh, molded individually, then put back together for the final assembled piece. And some of these resin castings here are almost indistinguishable. I like the look of your stuff. Right. Like you said last time, almost look not half finished, but incomplete in a way. That's right, that's right. We, our aesthetic um, is a rougher, more organic, rawer look. We worked in the comic statue industry and we felt a lot of that stuff was getting so clean and so tight mm. and so watered down. We couldn't tell who had sculpted it, even though we knew the styles of these different sculptors. And um, now with ZBrush, which is awesome, and we love that stuff. Uh, but it's not what our style is. Our style is more of uh, Frank Frazetta is one sure. of our heroes, or Rodan. Now, we're not on those guys' level. But we like that um, organic, uh, raw look. And so a lot of other artists like it. We've been lucky with that. And it translates uh, well into, like, when we do our bronzes, we think it translates well into bronze, where the piece is kind of rough and, and, and uh, unfinished looking. My brother says he wants it to look like the sculptor just got up and walked away mm -hmm. from it. Right, right. And, and the piece is almost, you know, sitting there on his work table. Not like it's a finished, polished piece that's been poured over for hours and hours so and hours. So when do you consider it's finished? You know, that's interesting. Um, it's a group decision. My brother and I and some of our family members and some of our friends, but we, we almost, you know, I, I've said before that I don't feel like I've ever finished a piece, that I keep working and then eventually someone takes the piece away from yeah. us, you know? And that's kind of what happens because the truth is, if you don't get to that, that stage where you're saying, I'm sending it now yeah. to the foundry or to the mold maker, I could still be working on stuff I was doing 20 years ago. Sure. Still noodling, it would still be malleable and moving in a different direction possibly design-wise. So at some point you have to say, okay, that's it. Now you mentioned Frazetta, you know, the fantasy influence, and that's something that immediately is recognizable as an right. influence for you. But you also last time mentioned like Mobius as an influence for you, some yes. of the, the more science fiction elements. That's and, right. and so I see even like characters like this, it's not right. just fantasy, you have dragons, but you have cobbled together hard parts. Now are these also hand sculpted or do you do mixed media and, and bring in um, we're, we're, plastic? We're not afraid of mixed media, and we've done some of that in the past, but almost all of this is clay. 
uh, is the Aves epoxy sculpt. Sometimes we'll do a little mold off of a seal or a bottle cap or something to get a sharp edge, but it's still actually clay. We love this. There are some Mobius pieces that you look at and you don't know, is this in the past or is it in the future? And we love that idea. Like, is this 300 years ago or 300 years from now? Sort of a post-apocalyptic thing. And so this, these pieces that are kind of out of time and you're not sure, we certainly took that from Mobius and a lot of his design sensibility, I think. We were big, big fans growing up. What's next for you and brother? Are you guys working in bigger scales, more elaborate, more ambitious we, projects? We are. We, we, we've done some big stuff and that's a lot of fun. We've been working on um, a project with one of our heroes, you know, Sushi Nirasawa, uh, who did the book Creature Core, mm -hmm. and he's passed away. But we are working on a Nirasawa tribute piece for our company. And we haven't been able to show that yet, but it's a great passion project for us. Uh, he, he, we're massive fans of his. And trying to get in all of our own stuff in between jobs, you know. Well, it's a pleasure to see you here, Brandon, and especially to see some of these works in progress. And uh, people can find your works. You guys do instructional videos. You guys That's do right. uh, kits and fully finished pieces on your website. It's uh, www.shiflitbrothers.com. Awesome. It's great to see you, Brandon. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.